Today, we're talking about four specific tips that you can implement right now that are going to allow you to level up your fly tying game faster than you ever thought was possible. My name is Alex and I'm part of the team here at Ventures Fly Co. And these tips are gonna help whether you've been following along since the start of our beginner fly tying masterclass, or if this is our first time meeting each other, stoked to have you here. This is module five, and we're gonna be covering a bunch of tactics on how to level up your tying skills and become a self-sufficient tire. Meaning you're gonna be able to seek out any pattern that you wanna tie and make it happen. So let's just dive right in to tip number one. Practice, practice, practice. Now right off the bat, this might seem kind of obvious, but in our world of instantaneous gratification and search results, this often gets overlooked. Let's just think of the best fly tire that you know, whether it's that guy that you follow on Instagram, that channel that you're subscribed to on YouTube, or that guy that just lives down the street that's been fly fishing for 40 years. Those guys didn't just wake up one morning and wow, I'm really good at fly tying all of a sudden. They've put in the reps, they've put in the practice, they've probably tied thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even a hundred thousand flies in their lifetime. And so it's just like any other skill. You gotta put in the time, you gotta put in the reps, you gotta put in the work to become really good at something. And so let's just imagine that you tied one dozen flies every week for the next year. You will have tied 624 flies it'd be pretty unreasonable to say that after that many flies, you're not going to improve. In fact, I would argue that you're gonna improve a lot. And so as you make time during the week, whether you're watching that show or sitting around on a lazy Sunday afternoon or setting up a tying night with your fishing buddies, as you put in those reps, as you consistently practice, it's probably gonna surprise you how fast you're able to level up your skills. All right, tip number two, try new patterns. So a couple summers back, I was browsing through my fly box when I was on the river and I picked out this pheasant tail that had a really cool like slate gray CDC collar. And so I tied it on and man, I caught fish after fish after fish. It was like a freaking fish magnet. When I got back from the river, I was like, I gotta tie some of these up. But I wasn't super familiar with CDC. I hadn't used it very much. And so I picked up a bag of feathers and I found an online tutorial. But right off the bat, I started having issues. I would get to the end of the fly and the stem of the feather would pop right out of the thread every single time determination, grit, whatever you want to call it. I burned through about half the bag of feathers and I found three or four other tutorials that explained it in a different way. But ultimately, I persevered. I tied up about 12 ugly looking flies before I finally had that one beautiful CDC collar pheasant tail. But now, I know how to tie up a nymph with a CDC collar. And so, if you never challenge yourself with a new pattern or a new material, you're never going to improve. Let's say you're really good at tying nymphs. That's what you tie the most often. It might be time to try out those dry flies that you've been avoiding. That, that parachute post is not as hard as you think it is. Or maybe you tie up dry flies, you tie up nymphs all the time. Let's try that crazy looking articulated streamer. As you go outside of your comfort zone, you're gonna level up your fly tying skills. All right, tip number three, get creative. So last summer, the VFC crew and I, we planned this epic trip to a remote crystal clear cutthroat stream up in Northern Idaho. And it was caddis season, so Leading up to the trip, I was like, I gotta fill up my box with some new caddis patterns. I did some research online and I found three or four that I thought were pretty interesting. And I looked through my bin of materials and I just didn't really have exactly what was needed for those patterns. So I was like, I'm just gonna make something up. I'm gonna create a new pattern. 
I grabbed a curved nymph hook and a big copper bead, some green elastic, and some fluffy hair zier UV ice dub type dubbing. It didn't look exactly like those caddis patterns I had found online, but it was pretty similar and I thought it looked pretty good. So I put three or four of them in my box and we headed up to Idaho. And little did I know that this fly was going to be a game changer, man. I was out fishing everybody on the entire VFC crew. This thing was dynamite. Let's not forget that the reason we're tying up flies is to catch fish. As you mix and match different techniques or switch out the color or try a new material, you're not only going to level up your tying skills, but you're probably gonna put more fish in the net. All right, tip number four is get feedback from others. Although I feel like I'm pretty good at tying up a bunch of different patterns, and I think I could tie up pretty much any pattern you sent my way if you gave me a few days of practice, by no means do I consider myself a master fly tire. And this attitude serves me well because I'm able to watch videos of fly tires that are much better than myself and how they do things differently or even better. And I'm able to take those things that I learn and use them to improve the way that I tie certain patterns and not get stuck in a rut. And then another thing I love to do is when I'm with experienced tires is to actually show them my flies and ask them how I can improve. In fact, a little while back, I'm out on the river with Spencer, the guy that does our podcasts and a few of our other videos. And he's like, hey, you have any Frenchies? And I was like, yeah, come on over. And I pulled one out of my box and I gave it to him. And I'm like, what do you think? He looked at it and he just shook his head like Spencer does. He's like, bro, way too much dubbing. In fact, this thing needs a haircut. We're gonna nickname this thing the Afro Frenchie. <laughs> now, instead of getting offended and how dare you critique my flies, Spencer, I started looking through my box and I was like, oh man, he's right. I've been using way too much dubbing on all my nibs. And so I really appreciated the feedback he gave me. But ultimately the thing that matters most and the best judge of our fly is gonna be the fish. That day we caught plenty of fish on the Afro Frenchie. They didn't care as much as Spencer or I did about the dubbing proportions on that nymph. So being willing to improve and to seek out feedback, it's a great way to level up your fly tying skills. But if you don't really have anyone around you that's an experienced fly tire, or you're just plain embarrassed by some of the very first flies that you've tied up, we would love to help out. We've got an entire team of experienced fly tires here at VFC. And if you sent some pictures or a video of your fly our way, we'd be more than happy to look them over and send some constructive criticism your way. And so as you start to level up your skills, and keep tying flies, that's just not gonna be possible without buying more hooks, more beads, and more materials. So in the next section, we're gonna talk about if and how it's possible to save money by tying your own flies. It's gonna be a good one. See you over there.